What is happening, boys and girls? Jim here, RCAD. Today is Thursday, October 19th, 2023. Shop Talk Round 2. Going back to our Traxxas Long Arm Lift Kit and High Trail Edition vehicles. Uh, this applies to both of you guys and gals out there. Got our suspension geometry figured out. Went back to our old servo mount. Many thanks to viewers uh, Will Anderson and Chad Nelson. Man, thanks guys for that heads up. That was huge. I would have figured it out eventually, but you guys definitely saved me a lot of time <laughs> by suggesting to go back to that factory uh, servo mount instead of using the included servo mount and Pan Harbor location. So going back to our old servo mount and Pan Harbor location, doing some mild uh, measurements or measurement changes here on our pan hard bar lengthening that ever so slightly and some serious tweaking to our steering link to get that all that stuff to jive up we'll go ahead and take a look at that stuff here in a second but that solved all our problems once again I would have figured this out eventually but I was taking everything for face value taking everything for granted uh, knowing Traxxas and Traxxas products and knowing that uh, when they give you these uh, upgraded parts to put on your vehicle that usually their measurements and uh, geometry and all that stuff is sound I was just kind of taking that at face value, and, uh, you know, I would have figured it out eventually. <laughs> I eventually would have thought back to my niece's Red Cat Gen 8 and how I would how I modified that to get everything correct. And it would have brought me right back to this conclusion. But, uh, yeah, many thanks, guys. You guys saved me a whole lot of thought and legwork uh, with throwing that suggestion out there. And you're spot on. We got it, everything working good and jiving good, and we have full articulation with our suspension. All right, so looking at the old setup over here on my brother's Bronco, he's still running that stock setup. I just changed this out a couple hours ago. It literally took me about six hours uh, from top to bottom to strip this thing back down, put that new mount in there, get the new servo in there, and figure out where our pan hard bar and steering link had to be six hours in and out on that whole deal. So looking at my brother's setup here, still running that stock factory upgraded setup here where he drops your steering servo down, moves it forward drastically as well as moving your pan hard bar down and forward as well. Check out the articulation on the driver's side. That's as far as it'll go. We are bottomed out. We have roughly 8 to 10 millimeters of open shock shaft that's not being used. Now if we compress both shocks at the same time, we have roughly 10 to 15 millimeters of open shock shaft that's not being used. So that's shock travel that you're not getting. Now, we have full articulation on the passenger side. Once again, we had that before. We can fully compress the passenger side. We just didn't have full compression or full articulation on the driver's side. Nor could we compress both shocks at the same time to full compression. Just because our panhard bar and all that other nonsense is bottoming out. Panhard bar is actually coming into contact with the servo horn. Just barely. But it is. <laughs> it's definitely rubbing. That is for darn sure. All right, so uh, viewers Will Anderson and Chad Nelson threw out the idea of going back to that uh, factory servo mount there. And I'm, I, I don't know if you guys came up with it originally, but hey, whoever came up with it original, originally, don't know what, what your name is, but if I did, I'd throw it out here. <laughs> Good idea to go back to that. All right, so we did some minor readjusting or whatever, and we got all this stuff jiving correctly. Um, talking about our servo horn rubbing on the pan hard bar previously, this is a factory uh, Traxxas metal servo horn, and I painted it uh, orange with a orange neon Sharpie. More of a burnt orange than anything else, but right here around the hub where it gets attached to the servo, that's where it was rubbing on the back of the pan hard bar. And my last run, we took out my Bronco with my deep lug paddle tracks on it <laughs> out against my brother's truck with the 2.2 mud uh super swampers on there and uh boy oh boy, boy guys we hogged out the adventure course we seriously dug it out so make sure to check out that video if you haven't seen it <laughs> it'll be just before this video check out my video a library and uh look back to find that one but yeah interesting run tracks versus the uh 2.2s and the entire run, my servo horn was rubbing on my pan hard bar. So when I got back here, all the paint or marker was rubbed off right there around the corner. So I previously recoated it, repainted it. Uh, pretty easy to do with a Sharpie. <laughs> That's a nice thing about using Sharpies. It's easy to recoat and touch things up, not being sponsored. But uh, yeah, that was rubbing the entire time. So after figuring out our suspension geometry, getting everything changed back around, putting our servo back in and its uh, factory location being mounted in from the top down. Once again, I tried mounting it in from the bottom up, just mock fit it, put it in there, crunched the suspension. It wasn't going to work. I had to go back in from the top down. Uh, we've got full suspension travel. Once again, we can fully compress our shocks. 
and our pan R bar is not coming anywhere near our servo horn. So we're much better off on that aspect too. Now the only drawback on this setup was how drastically I had to uh, tweak our steering link to get this to work. So check out our steering link right here. Oops, let's get this hook out of the way. <laughs> Checking out our steering link. I had to drastically bend these little eyelets here on the end or the end links in order to get this, this to jive. Uh, initially, the way this is set up, the top half of our eyelet down here, the very top half, was right about where the top of my fingernail is. So we had about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of gap that we had to make up. That was like pushing it up as far as it would go. We had a huge gap between that and the servo horn. Now we could take care of it by putting a spacer in on this end and a spacer in on that end and kind of dropping things down and raising things up, but that robs a lot of torque. Putting a bend on it like this robs a lot of torque as well. That is uh, huge. And heating it up with a torch and bending it like that uh, seriously uh, compromises the structural integrity of this end link, <laughs> or at least this plastic eyelet. Uh, it's probably going to make it a little bit more brittle and uh, definitely more fragile in cold temperatures. I don't see a problem running tires in the summertime so much, uh, but tracks in the wintertime on a real cold day trying to turn these guys left to right, uh, we might shatter one of these uh, eyelets down here. But we do have extras, <laughs> just FYI. And disclaimers, boys and girls, whenever it comes to working and modifying RC cars and RC vehicles, if you see something on YouTube such as this video or uh, another online source and you see somebody modifying their vehicle and you want to do the same thing, and you mess up somewhere down the line, that is your fault, not their fault. It was your decision to work on your vehicle. So, same here. Just throwing out a disclaimer. <laughs> so, as far as these little end links go, if you go too far, you mess up. Don't worry. If you have one of these lift kits, you've got extras. So, this is what it was like. And that's what I turned it into. Which is pretty drastic by comparison. Holding these guys up side by side, it's pretty drastic. So what I did is I used a pair of needle nose pliers, small needle nose pliers, and I put it on our end link just like this. Keep separating our eyelet from the heat, essentially. And then I heated this up with a torch, a little micro torch, and then bent the other end up, trying to keep it as straight as I possibly could. So the pliers were nice and straight on the eyelet, and I was bending this straight up. And I was bending that a little bit further than what I had to go, just because when the plastic starts to cool, it kind of bends back down ever so slightly. So I heated this end up, bent it up where I wanted it to have it, kind of eyeballing things, guesstimating, let it cool down, flipped it around, and did the other side. Of course, this whole piece was disconnected from the vehicle at the time. Basically just clamped it with the pliers, heated it up, gave it a little bend, let it cool down, and repeat the process on the other side. All right, we've got our steering link removed. Now, uh, what I'm about to do, I don't necessarily recommend. Whenever it comes to working on RCs, a little disclaimer here, you are taking that responsibility into your own hands. If you're watching a video such as this on YouTube or somebody else's video on whatever other online source, and you see somebody working on their vehicle, you want to do the same thing, and you mess up somewhere down the line, that's your fault, not their fault. Uh, so, hey, be cautious about stuff like this. All right, so next little modification is to bend our little eyelets here and give this a stronger angle. Now, if we mess up on these eyelets, <laughs> we're going to heat these up with a micro torch, chuck them in a pair of pliers, and put a slight bend on these. We want to get this on a stronger angle going up, and we want this one on a stronger angle coming down ever so slightly. If we mess up, we still have these other uh, eyelets here from our end links that came off the rear axle and they're the exact same eyelet so we've got four other eyelets sitting here <laughs> as spares in case we mess up uh, after we heat this up and put our bend in it it is going to take away some of the strength and rigidity of this part so it is more more likely to break at that point in time but we want to get this to where we need to be essentially that way we can go online and see if we can find some proper end links somewhere down the way or somewhere down the line. All right, so I'm going to take a micro torch and heat these guys up. Put a pair of pliers on them, like right down here. Heat this up around this area and bend this up ever so slightly to put a slight bend in that. And then I'm going to turn around and do the same thing to this side. 
I'm going to heat this up ever so slightly and put a slight bend in it, into that plastic just to get this at a better angle. Leaving our links threaded in. That way we don't mess up the plastic, <laughs> lose our thread or anything else along the lines. Oh, she's bubbling. Make sure we hold our torch in a responsible area so we're not going to be Melting any tires are sitting off to the side. <laughs> Have to kind of hold it in position until it cools down. We definitely change the position on that one. We just need to do the same thing on this one. We need to let this one cool down though. Uh, that way we don't burn our fingers. All right, round two. Move on to our other side here. You have to bend it just a little bit further than you want to go just to get it to where you want to be. Something like that, maybe. Maybe something like that. Got our steering link reattached. No problems reaching the servo horn right now. We probably could have bent that just a little bit further, but we still need to take into account of compressing the suspension. So I think we'll be okay right there to start off with, but we need to adjust our length because our steering is a little bit off. Right now we're turning to the left. <laughs> so in order to have everything straight across here, we need to uh, crank this out just a little bit to get that to mount up. So turn these guys out a little bit and see where we're at. All right, so I just went out five full turns to get our steering link to the right length. I basically turned it once on this end, which put this end upside down, and then I went to this side and turned that one once and counted that as one turn. Turn this again and turn this one again, two turns. So on and so forth until I had five full turns. I was doing this one turn at a time until we got our right length on it so our steering is sitting straight. So five full turns in order to get this to line up correctly. It's just a matter of getting our screw reattached real quick. For our steering uh, pipman arm to <laughs> steering link, whatever you want to call it. We'll get this thing ran in real quick and uh, see how everything jives. All right, well, this is definitely an ugly mess. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> but it does work. Now, uh, once again, extremely brittle at this point in time, here and here. And this is a strong angle coming off of here. So that's torque robbing in itself, just that extreme angle right there. The way Traxxas has it set up is definitely a little bit more correct. Less torque robbing, more of a straight shot push 
and a straight shot pull when it comes to that servo horn and that drag link down there. Better angles on that. Definitely more of a straight line. So I like that setup there, the way that is. Um, it would be nice if they included a different bracket. Like, let's say you use your same pan hard bar location, but change your servo mount bracket once again so it's moving your servo further forward, let's say up in here where the external battery tray is. And turn the servo around 180 degrees. Turn your servo horn around 180 degrees. So instead of coming at it this way, it's coming at it this way. And then hook it up. You could get it lower because you'd separate it from the pan hard bar. Instead of the servo horn being the or instead of the servo and servo horn being behind the pan hard bar, it'd be in front of it. Over in here. And we could uh, you know, maybe possibly drop it down a little bit lower if they came up with a new bracket that moved it up to closer to the external battery tray and turned everything around so it's coming in this way instead of coming out the other way. <laughs> All right, so that's a little disclaimer right there is on this little process right here, uh, the extreme bend that you have to put on this. Now, for the most part, this vehicle is probably going to be riding with the suspension relatively compressed. It normally rides right about there anyways, with the way the shocks are set up. So our angle is not going to be as extreme across there. So we should be okay. Once again, a little bit brittle after doing that bend. Definitely would be a good idea to go online and do some uh, eyelet shopping and try to find something that has this bend in it right out of the gate. That way you don't have to worry about structural integrity. <laughs> but for you guys who are trying to save a buck, if you do have this lift kit, we've got two extra ends that come on our upper link for the panhard bar. We've got Four extra ends are the exact same that come for the uh, the upper links for the rear axle. Because these guys are tapered as well. So we got four extra ends with, with these guys. So plenty of ends laying around. Now when it came to the panhard bar, getting the correct length for our panhard bar. Uh, first thing I did is I went back to our kit and used some of these uh, end links that came with the kit for the 124 millimeter wheelbase. If you were going to use it, the 100... The, the, 324 millimeter wheelbase, not 124, but 324. You would switch out the ends on your 312 millimeter rear axle links uh, to these longer ends right here. So that's what I used was one of these longer links down here or ends, and screwed everything together. Uh, but it was just a little bit too long. So then I tightened it up as far as I could get it, and I couldn't quite get it down small enough. Uh, to make everything work so i took that back off <laughs> went back to the stock end that was on there and turned it out a little bit now i was started messing around with measurements in between 94 millimeters overall length from uh outside of the link to the outside of the link once again uh from here to here 94 millimeters on a micrometer and uh started out with that and then eventually got down to 92 millimeters at the best length for what's available. So in starting off at 94, anywhere between 94 and 91 millimeters, the suspension articulates perfectly left to right. But when it comes to full compression, uh, anything north of 92, you would get shock bind. Anything south of 92, you'd get shock bind. So 92 millimeters was the perfect length to not get shock bind when you compress your both shocks at the same time. 93 millimeters, it binds up right about here. You can still get it, you can push it past it, but it's definitely going to be damaging your shock seals. 91 millimeters, same thing. Binds up right about here, ever so slightly. Uh, 94, 95, you know, it binds up uh, a little earlier. <laughs> but with the uh, 92 millimeters, it seems to be pretty smooth overall. It's not perfect, mind you. Um, if we had a different shaft here with a finer thread nothing uh, something that's not so coarse we might be able to fine tune this a little bit more mid video interruption yes lots of rc's hanging on the wall what we ultimately need to cure this little pan hard bar, pan hard bar problem and to get everything more exact on our measurements so our suspension is a lot more fluid up and down is a uh, more infinitely adjustable pan hard bar uh, using like a link off of Traxxas Slash, one of these toe-in, toe-out links, or something off of a low C10, or another type of vehicle. Basically what we need is a link bar that has a right-hand thread on one side and a left-hand thread on the other. That way when you crank that turnbuckle in or out, you can open or close that gap 
more finely. You can fine tune that gap. What we're using on the Traxxas TRX fours um, is not. You know, you have to turn this one half turn at a time. So take it off and turn that one half of a turn or turn this one half of a turn and that's all you get, you know, and that's a pretty uh, rough guess on things. <laughs> uh, in order to fine tune it, we need a link like this. Something with the right hand thread on one side and the left hand thread on the other. And then when you turn that turnbuckle in or turn it out, you can fine tune it in and out. So there we go, mid video interruption on that. If you want to get it exactly perfect with your pan hard bar and your uh, distances and get your suspension as fluid as it's possibly going to get, then you're going to need something uh, link, like a link off of a Traxxas Slash. But for using factory equipment, just using what came with the kit, then right around 92 millimeters is pretty darn close. If you're using a micrometer, 92.19 or 92.2. But if you're using that measurement paper that came uh, with your instructions for the long arm lift kit, then right around 92 millimeters from end to end, outside to outside, is about as close as you're going to get it using factory equipment. All right, let's get back to our video. So right now, as it is using stock factory hardware, 92 millimeters is a pretty good uh, overall uh, guesstimate at what it needs to be. Just guessing, once again. So, and once again, whenever it comes to working on your own vehicle, you're taking that responsibility in your own hands. But 92 millimeters, all right? So I messed around from 94 to 91, going back and forth, back and forth. I had this Panhard bar on here multiple times probably 30 times <laughs> before uh, deciding that 92 was our perfect length without uh, getting any unnecessary bind. Now it's very rare that you're going to be compressing your suspension all the way like that to begin with. Most of the time you're articulating left and right and riding at a certain height. It's very rare that you compress it completely. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to depress it. And full articulation is no problem. So once again, many thanks there, Will Anderson and Chad Nelson, <laughs> for that little heads up on that little situation. And once again, steering link up here. Uh, overall length on our steering link. Okay, so to begin with, it was a little bit shy of the ser servo horn. It was coming out to about here. And after putting our radical bends on it, we shortened it up just a wee bit more. So we had to adjust this out a little bit. So I adjusted this out a half a turn at a time on each end just to keep it equal length between each end link. I want to make sure that each one had the same amount of thread on the inside. So I did half a turn here, half a turn, and then half a turn here, which equals one full turn. Put it up there, checked it. Wasn't quite right. Took it back off, another half a turn here, another half a turn here, which equals two full turns. Put it back up and checked it. And then kept on repeating that process until I did that, until I had five full turns on here. And that was the correct, correct length uh, to get our steering all back in alignment and everything straight again. So five full turns on here, radical bends on each end of the link. <laughs> and this needs to be 92 millimeters from outside to outside on the pan hard bar to get that to where it needs to be. And then running our stock um, servo mount right there. All right, uh, one other thing that I did, uh, other guys who aren't going to go back to that system, <laughs> was lowered our battery tray back down to its factory location. Now, when it comes to crawling, you don't want your weight uh, high up in the air. So if you're using an external battery, like such as we are on this external battery tray, very easy to cut off the uh, little chunk hanging off the back of this battery tray. I use a bandsaw to cut off a little of that, that excess material and then use a wire wheel to smooth it down which lowered our, was able to lower our battery tray back down to its factory location. So the lift kit came with a lift kit for the battery tray, which lifted it up to this higher location, which once again gets your weight higher up in the air, more advantageous to have that weight down low. So a simple cut across the back, and we were able to uh, get our uh, external battery tray back in its stock location and uh, clearing the servo without a problem. But hey, if you guys, uh, once again, go back to your stock, servo mount <laughs> and pan hard bar location, you won't have to worry about that because you'll be able to take your battery tray and lower it back down, uh, remove those lift blocks and put it back down in that location and everything will jive out without cutting that extra material off. So there we go on that nonsense. And suspension geometry is all pretty much figured out on this guy. Once again, we've got full articulation. Woohoo! <laughs> That's huge. 
having full articulation on the driver's side. Uh, once again, not having that before. And uh, full compression on both. That's gigantic compared to how it was. Once again, falling short of full compression and falling short of uh, full articulation. So yeah, many thanks, guys. Many thanks. Very much appreciated for that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to cover base on is uh, shock talk. Talking about shocks. Okay. All right, so another viewer had mentioned um, when using this other bracket here that some people had switched over to the Yeah Racing Desert Lizard 120 millimeter shocks to get that extra suspension travel. Uh, so I wanted to touch base on those Desert Lizard shocks. I don't personally own a set of the Yeah Racing Desert Lizard 120 millimeter shocks or any kind of Yeah Racing shocks, but I do have a set of Boom Racing shocks. <laughs> These guys right here which are supposedly 110 millimeters. Now, I bought these back in 2016. I've had them for quite a while. Now, if we take a look at these boom racing shocks, you gotta admit, they look pretty darn similar to the Yeah Racing Desert Lizards, don't they? Pretty darn similar. Other than the name, almost identical. I'd say they are identical. <laughs> so these are some 110 millimeter shocks. Now, I bought these for my RC four-wheel drive trail finder tube back in 2016. I was running a set of 100 millimeter RC four wheel drive shocks on that all the way around, which are definitely different than stock, longer travel than stock by far. I wanted to upgrade it to 110s, and I figured I'd try these guys out. So I bought these, immediately threw them on my truck, started doing some articulation testing in the garage and the workbench, uh, putting it up on a stack of tires, and I uh, quickly realized that I lost travel <laughs> by adding these. All right, so Boom Racing, 110 millimeter shock, very similar to the Yeah Racing shock. Take a look at our shock body. This is a RC four wheel drive 100 millimeter shock or RC 4WD 100 millimeter shock. 100 millimeters. Hold the shock bodies up side by side, eyelet to eyelet. Who's got the bigger shock body? Well, that 100 millimeter shock is a little bit longer than our 110. Looking at the shock body, overall length, I mean, this is where it screws on at the end. There's where that piece screws on on the end. It's just a little bit longer in overall length, which suggests more travel. Correct? The longer the shock body, the longer the piston, the more travel it has. <laughs> so these are both internally sprung shocks, meaning the spring is on the inside of these guys. This one came with three different spring rates, a soft, a medium, and a stiff. Um, each spring gets progressively longer. Softest one is shorter, or the shortest. Medium is a little bit longer. Uh, stiffest one is longer yet. Spring goes on the inside. Piston compresses the spring. You're compressing that material inside this enclosed area. The longer the spring, the less the piston travels because you're trying to compress more material inside that shock body. Right now we have the softest spring in here, and that's as far as this will compress to the softest spring. That's not very impressive. Very slow to rebound as well with that soft spring, which makes you want to put the uh, stiffer spring in there, which has even less travel because <laughs> you're trying to compress more material on the inside. So the soft spring in this one as well, but at least it travels uh, significantly further. And if we were to put these two side by side and measure their shock travel uh, side by side, uh, this one does travel down about a sixteenth of an inch further than our 110 millimeter shock right there. It's just a little bit more travel, maybe a sixteenth of an inch overall. Or an eighth of an inch. It's, you know, about that much. <laughs> but this is a 100 millimeter shock, and this is a 110 millimeter shock. Which makes me think that those Yeah Racing Desert Lizard 120 millimeter shocks maybe aren't 120s. Maybe they're closer to 110s overall length since this is a 110 boom racing shock which looks identical it is 110 millimeter Got two sets of them since 2016 never used they had around my truck for about five minutes 110 versus a 100 millimeter which once again makes me think that those yeah racing 120s are probably closer to 110s <laughs> so anybody who has those yeah racing desert lizard 120 millimeter shocks if you still have your traxxas 110 millimeter shocks put them up side by side measure the overall piston travel and see who's got who's got more travel 
see which one's traveling farther. I'd almost be willing to bet the tra that, the, that the Traxxas 110 millimeter shocks have more overall shock travel than the Boom or than the uh, Yeah Racing Desert Lizard 120 millimeter shocks. Now these guys were getting their extra length with the end, the shock end that went on here. They had a crazy long shock end on here, which was giving them that total 110 millimeter length versus our 100 millimeter shock. All right. So that's where they were getting their extra length from, it was with the end piece. Now, technically speaking, we could do the same thing with these shocks. We could replace our eyelet down here on the end for a longer one, one that's 10, mil 10, mil 10 millimeters longer. And we would move our axle essentially 10 millimeters further down, separating it from the shock by 10 millimeters, which would allow your shock to travel up even further without your suspension interrupting using this setup right here. Look at our setup right here. Let's compress our suspension right there. Now, you can imagine if we had an uh, end link down here that was 10, mil 10 mil mil millimeters longer, it would be down here, which would allow you to move this piston up even further into the shock uh, cylinder up there. So that's where uh, Boom Racing was getting their extra length. It was right down here with this eyelet. They had a long eyelet on here. So once again, you could do that to this. And you'd be able to get your travel out of it right there. Only problem is that, you, is that you'd be lifting your truck 10 millimeters further into the air by pushing your axles down 10 millimeters. And you'd have to do the same thing to the back to match up the ride height. <laughs> and you might have to do some more pan hard bar adjusting down here as well. Possibly some steering link adjusting uh, because you're dropping your axle down even further. You're pushing it down 10 millimeters, separating it, separating it 10 millimeters further away from your shock. And you're still getting robbed, technically. You're not actually gaining any more travel. Um, you're just, you know, uh, getting the travel you're supposed to have, but you're pushing your axle further away. Technically speaking, you're better off going back to that stock servo mount location, using your 110 millimeter shocks, messing around with your length here, and getting this out to 92 millimeters and putting some crazy bends on your steering there. And then you can gain full articulation and full compression without having to raise your truck any higher in the air. You know, kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> so there we go on that nonsense, talking about shocks. No guarantees on the Yeah Racing uh, Desert Lizard 120s. I don't own a set, so I can't say anything bad about them. But I do own a set of these Boom Racing shocks. And once again, they do look awfully darn similar, don't they? To those Yeah Racing shocks, pretty darn identical overall. We can compare these 110s against these 100s, and these 100s are obviously a little bit longer, equal, if not a little bit longer. Shock body there has more travel overall uh, versus a 110, so hey, that kind of says it all right there, really. A 100 versus a 110, and, and, and the 100s longer? <laughs> what more do you need to say, really, at that point in time, right? So these guys never made it onto my vehicle just because of that factor. Um, they're only good for educational purposes at this point in time. <laughs> All right, so there we go, boys and girls. Uh, suspension geometry solved for the most part. Steering geometry, you know, once again, kind of unsafe, really. Torque robbing, for sure. Uh, it would pay to have a higher torque servo. That is, there's no doubt about it. But uh, fragile, having it, you know, uh, sitting up like that. It takes a lot of torque push and pull that drag link at an angle like this versus an angle like this. That would be a lot smoother than that. But, once again, we're going to be riding with our suspension sort of like this for the most part. So, not as radical. <laughs> Fingers crossed that it holds up. Once again, disclaimers, boys and girls, whenever it comes to working on your vehicles, custom modifying your vehicles, you see somebody else doing it, monkey see, monkey do. If you mess up somewhere down the line, you were taking that responsibility in your own hands, and you mess up, it's your fault, yada, yada, yada. So whenever it comes to working on your vehicle, you screw up, it is your problem, not the person who's doing the video. <laughs> but right now, we got our suspension geometry right to where it needs to be for the most part. At least we've got full articulation with it, and we can compress uh, both shocks. So, hey, win-win all the way around on that nonsense. Mid-video interruption. All right, my apologies, boys and girls. I apologize for this interruption, but this is a key information here. Getting our steering geometry absolutely perfect. I uh, wasn't happy with that other setup that we had going on. 
Unbeknownst to all of you guys out there, a week's worth of time has transpired. It's done nothing but rain for a week straight up here. We haven't had a chance to go out and test these vehicles as of yet. But looking at that steering geometry setup that we had going on for a week, uh, I've had plenty of time to think about it and just didn't like the way it was set up. So came up with a new uh, setup for our steering geometry. Taking a look at my brother's truck up here, uh, I did swap his truck over as well. Went back to our old servo mount location and pan harbor location. Put those extreme bends on our steering link. And that's not what I, that, that's why I didn't like for those extreme bends that we had going on with that steering link. If we look at our steering link, it's sitting up at a stronger angle than our pan harbor significantly. We're asking a lot out of our steering servo. We're asking a lot out of this bend, out of this elbow uh, right here on our uh, upper uh, swivel ball. So asking a lot out of that. And we, when we compress the suspension all the way, that elbow is still sticking up a little bit right there and is uh, going to be a break point right there. So I did not like that setup one bit and decided to come up with a little different style setup. Initially, I toyed around with the idea of putting a small spacer over here and a small spacer over here to drop this down and raise this up or possibly a big spacer on this side to drop this down and level things out a little bit. Uh, and I thought that would rob a little bit too much torque. But after looking at everything, <laughs> I think this is going to take way take up way more torque uh, than adding a spacer. So I went back to the spacer idea, and let's uh, check out that little setup. Sorry for bouncing all over the map here. And this is going to be tough to explain as well. Looking at our steering link. So we did away with our two custom bent ends in favor of a couple of spacers here. And the truck's sitting on a summit. Uh, a little bit of an angle here is resting on the links, so my apologies for how everything looks here. Looking at our steering link once again, previously it was sitting up at a stronger angle than the pan hard bar, and now we're sitting at, at a lesser angle uh, compared to the pan hard bar. Added a spacer up here between our steering link uh, and the servo, and then added a spacer down here between the turnbuckle on our upright and the uh, swivel ball. Now you can't just go all in one shot up here on the upper portion or else uh, it'll come into contact with the top of your differential. So you have to drop this down a little bit and raise this up a little bit. You can't get it all done in one shot on one end or the other. When it comes to the lower end down here, since this screw is sitting in on a, on a taper <laughs> going into the turnbuckle down here, the more spacers we add on this end or the more height that we go on this end, the tighter the swivel ball gets inside the socket on this little end link, on this eyelet. So we can't go too extreme on this, or else the, su the suspension just doesn't rebound uh, correctly. It starts to bind up because the swivel ball is getting bound up inside that little eyelet down there. So when I change this around, I use one of our custom bent ends down here at the bottom. We needed to have a bent end on the bottom. Um, between the two bends, we custom bent these guys, so they weren't equal. One had a stronger bend on it than the other one did. And I used the one with a lesser degree of bend on it. But I still needed a bent end down here in order for the swivel ball to move around freely with a spacer down here at the bottom. And then up at the top, I swapped out our custom bent end for our standard end, or a standard bent end like we had on there originally. Uh, put the original swivel ball back in it, and then added a 5 millimeter spacer up here. All right, so up on top, we've got a five millimeter spacer in between the swivel ball and the servo horn. We went from a 15 millimeter screw to a 20 millimeter screw. Down here at the bottom, I added a two millimeter spacer between the turnbuckle and the swivel ball. Once again, I started out with a two millimeter, went to a three millimeter, got tighter, four millimeter got tighter and tighter and tighter as far as you, as, as you went up the, the, the tower there, it just kept getting tighter and tighter. <laughs> so a uh, two millimeter spacer, was ultimately the uh, about the tallest you could go on this end down here. Once again, you can't go all the way on this end and or all the way on this end. You got to divide it up between the two points in order to get everything to sit right. So a two millimeter spacer down here. As far as spacers, I'm running low, drastically low on spacers. So I used a regular M3 nut as a spacer, and this is two millimeters thick. And it's pretty wide, so it's got pretty good surface area, <laughs> which is okay. So we added a two millimeter nut down here, or an M3 nut, which is two millimeters thick as a spacer. Changed out the screw from a 23 millimeter to a 25 millimeter, since we went 
to a two millimeter screw, we needed to have a uh, two millimeter spacer. We needed a, a screw that was two millimeters longer in order to fill the gap down here on the lower portion of our turnbuckle. Make sure we had all the threads going into this to keep this all held in check. All right, so not as torque robbing as it was previously. We do have to have a custom bend on here once again, just so we have a little bit of slack there on our swivel ball. Otherwise, if you use a standard end like this, um, your shock won't travel or won't extend all the way down because there's just too much bind right here on the swivel ball. Right now we're kind of resting on our lower links here with these foams, so it's pushing up on that. <laughs> all right, so we've got slop there, which is good. We had to use one custom bend down here. I got rid of the custom bend up here in favor of the normal bent one. That way we had as much strength and as rigidity as we could up in this end up here. All right, now once again, tough to explain here. <laughs> when we added a spacer down here and added a spacer up here, we were closing the gap down here on our, on our link bar. So basically what that meant was that our wheels were facing to the right. So we had to screw each one of our eyelets in a little bit further in order to get our wheels facing straight again. So after dropping this down and raising this up, we're bringing the gap in a little bit closer in between here and here, which means we got to screw these guys in a little bit further in order to get their steering geometry correct. And we couldn't do that because we already had them in uh, all as far as they could possibly go. <laughs> so that was the next problem at hand, boys and girls, was removing some material from our uh, threads on that rod there. So looking at our upper uh, link bar here, this is the old upper link that was on our front axle. When we put the lift kit on the vehicle, we got a new upper link for the front axle and two new lower links. This is the old upper link. As far as the ends go, once again, we had those two custom bent ends off of our steering link. I took one of the bent ends off of the upper link for the upper portion of our steering link. And then I popped out the eyelet that was on our upper link, which has the same diameter flange on either side of the swivel ball. And I installed the original swivel ball from our uh, other eyelet back in there. That way we had the fatter flange on the screw side on both ends. All right, so looking at the thread, uh, hypothetically speaking here for our steering link, I basically, if you were to divide this up into thirds, I cut one third of this material off of here. Roughly three threads down, three to four threads down. If you were to count the threads. We are one, two, uh, three. Roughly three threads down on either end. Basically wanted to cut a third off on each side. That way we can get these guys to thread in a little bit further. If we look at the inside of our swivel balls here, our end links, you can see that flat spot down at the bottom. That basically bottoms out right here on this flat spot. When you screw this together and you see this excess bit of material right here, that's basically how much thread we cut off. That much. If we were to thread this on, right there is all bottomed out, and we needed to come together a little bit further. We basically need to come, we need to move in about this far on each end, which once again is why I cut off about that much material off of each end. <laughs> that way we could get these guys to thread on a little bit further. So we moved about a third of material from each end of the threads on our steering link, which allowed us to get our swivel ball screwed in a little bit further and get our steering geometry back to normal left to right with everything sitting straight. So when your servo run is sitting straight, your truck will be driving in a straight line going down the road. So that is what needed to be done. So we went back to a normal uh, bent swivel ball up here at the end. <laughs> removed one third of the threads on this end, removed one third of the threads on this end. Uh, left one of our bent ends down here, the one with the uh, lesser bend on it so we didn't have as much uh, um, of a degree of an angle down here at this elbow. We went to a two millimeter spacer down here, went from our 23 millimeter screw to a 25 millimeter screw, went to a five millimeter spacer up on top, and went from a uh, 15 millimeter screw to a 20 millimeter screw. So right now, once again, we are at less of an angle than our Panhard bar. If we collapse our suspension all the way on either side, it's sitting relatively flat across here, not too much of an angle right there, We've got uh, movement in our uh, swivel balls. You can wiggle this back and forth without a problem. So everything's good there. Our screw isn't coming into contact with the top of the differential. And our servo horn isn't coming into contact with the panner bar when we turn the uh, steering left or right. So ultimately, I think that is probably the best setup right there. It's not at too extreme of an angle. 
we're not robbing too much torque across the board. And up, ultimately, if we upgrade to a stronger steering servo, which is what really should uh, should happen here, at least in my situation, <laughs> as we've seen in my last video with the uh, tracks versus the 2.2 tires, this EcoPower 120T was having a heck of a time trying to push those tracks around. So this guy is weak sauce, and we need to upgrade to something stronger, uh, especially after doing this nonsense to it. And swapping over and lowering our steering link down we're robbing a little bit of torque right here and we're losing a little bit of torque right here but with that other setup with those crazy extreme angles on there we we're losing a crazy amount of torque we never got a chance to test it out um, but i think this setup here right here ultimately is the better way to go ultimately what needs to happen with this nonsense boys and girls ladies and gentlemen is that traxxas needs to make a new servo mount bracket Traxxas or Bauhaus, somebody, <laughs> somebody with a 3D printer, possibly uh, a new servo mount that would sit in the front of the frame rails right up here, right where our exter external battery tray is sitting, essentially. So we'd be moving. We need to move the servo from behind the pan hard bar to in front of the pan hard bar. And if we had that servo mount sitting inside the frame rail, so let's say it was bent to fit up inside the frame rails and screw in right here and screw in right here, possibly a longer screw on this end so everything could tie together. The servo would be sitting flat like this. It would be sitting lower. If you can get it inside the frame rails, it would be sitting lower. You wouldn't have to worry about it hitting anything if it's tucked inside the frame rails. Instead of the, the servo horn coming out from the back of the vehicle towards the front of the vehicle, you could 180 it so it's going from the front of the vehicle towards the back of the vehicle. And you'd have your servo horn and servo completely divorced from the pan hard bar. And uh, clear up a lot more room to lower this down a little bit further and straighten out our steering geometry without having a spacer in here. So ultimately, Traxxas, that's what needs to happen in order to take advantage uh, of the full travel of these 110 millimeter shocks. And going back to our original servo mount and pan hard bar location, ultimately that servo needs to get moved forward up into here. But otherwise, uh, until somebody makes a bracket, <laughs> I think this is probably the next best setup in order to take full advantage of that uh, suspension travel. Once again, Traxxas goofed on their suspension geometry. Uh, a couple other people have talked about lift kits and stuff for real full-size vehicles and how uh, they move everything downward. Well, that's not giving you much of a lift. They're basically just giving uh, putting a body lift on your suspension. That's <laughs> all they're doing. They're taking your stock suspension and separating it, separating it from the chassis a little bit by moving that whole setup down a little bit and basically putting a lift block on your suspension. Uh, you're not gaining any more travel out of it, but... Uh, Right here with this setup, we're taking full advantage. Once again, with that other setup, with that other bracket on here, we weren't getting full articulation on the driver's side. We were losing about 8 millimeters or 10 millimeters of travel. And when we compress both shocks, we were losing about 20 millimeters, well, not 20, but maybe 15 millimeters worth of travel because everything was bottoming out right about here. So going back to that stock pan hard bar location, that stock servo mount location, we've got full articulation on the driver's side. And on the passenger side, so we're taking full advantage of those 110 millimeter shocks. Once again, Traxxas has a nine millimeter spacer on these guys right out of the gate. <laughs> so right now we are way better off. We're getting full travel. We don't have a spacer on there, and we've got full travel. And we compress both shocks. Once again, we've got full travel, whereas we didn't before with that other bracket. So once again, until Traxxas or somebody comes up with a new servo mount that would sit up here, this is probably the next best option to get that steering set up uh, where it needs to be in order to take advantage of that suspension travel. But ultimately speaking, uh, in my situation, I'm gonna need a stronger steering servo. <laughs> and that's probably the same for most people too that go to this kind of setup here. Uh, a stronger steering servo would be wise uh, just to compensate for that extra torque loss that we're getting right here and right down here. We're not losing that much right here. Other setup with those crazy bends, we would have been losing a lot more. Once again, I'm running that, that uh, EcoPower one, uh, WP120T steering servo. Uh, not very impressed with that at all. I think a Protec 370 TBL would be a wiser choice. That's what my brother's running. That puts out right around a little over 600 inch ounces of torque on 6 volts of electricity, uh, which is what we're using or what we're getting using that Traxxas Complete BEC kit. Ultimately, for pushing the tracks around, uh, in the snow or heavy slush or out there in the dirt. I think something more along the lines of the uh, Protec 1K TBL 
that puts out over 1,000 inch ounces on 8 volts, uh, right around 900 and some inch ounces on 7 volts, and 800 and some inch ounces on 6 volts. It would probably be the wisest choice. <laughs> so EcoPower WP120T, not getting it done. I think we're going to be upgrading to a ProTech 1K TBL here in the future. Steering uh, setup, once again, I think this is a uh, uh, the best way to go about this. And we're sitting at less of a degree of angle than the Panhard bar. And previously, we were at more of a degree of angle. So let's go take a look at my brother's Bronco once again, just to compare that. Here is that old setup once again. Pretty darn extreme. And the Panhard bar, or the steering link, is sitting at a stronger angle compared to the Panhard bar. Pretty strong bends there, asking a lot out of that elbow. Uh, to push these back and forth, <laughs> those big 2.2 tires. I'm checking out a stock setup over here. My niece's TRX4 Sport tracks uh, with the 90 uh, millimeter shocks on there, and our stock geometry. It looks like the steering link is actually sitting up a little bit taller, a uh, stronger angle than the Panhard bar. If we compress everything, it's all nice and flat across the board, no interruptions. But it does look like it's sitting up at a stronger angle. This is the Panhard bar, but this isn't lifted. That's a stock setup. This one, once again, the lifted, going back to that original servo mount location and uh, Panhard bar mount location. Custom bends, pretty gnarly. Compressor suspension, and nowhere near flat across the board there. Sorry for the terrible camera angles. Nowhere near flat across the board. And that elbow is sticking up a little bit right there, which is uh, probably going to create some tension possible breaking point <laughs> and the new setup here the one that the one that i think is going to be the winning choice uh, right here less of a degree of angle there between the pan r bar once again uh, we completely flatten this out and it's uh pretty flat across the board there compared to how it was so i think it's a win-win all the way around just need to step it up to a stronger steering servo and uh we should be good to go yeah, suspension is not behaving correctly because we're resting on these tire foams right on our links. So, <laughs> my apologies, boys and girls. All right, so just to recap here, looking at our steering link, one custom bent end down here, one normal end up here. Removed five, well, three threads on each end, so one third of the thread on each end of our link itself. Um, roughly the distance between the flange here and the uh, nut portion on our a swivel ball roughly that gap right there about that much material is what you need to remove so that's a good little measurement right there roughly that much from either end down here on the thread up on this end once again we've got a five millimeter spacer we swapped out to a 20 millimeter screw from a 15 to a 20 down here we had a two millimeter spacer went from a 23 millimeter screw to a 25 millimeter screw and once again using one of our custom bent ends over here that way we have free movement on our swivel ball and it's not binding up. If we use our normal end down there, it's still too much with tension trying to make it to that angle and a swivel ball ends up uh, sticking inside the socket. So we still need one custom bent end down here. And once again, that is the end result and I think that should work out pretty darn good at the end of the day. Still gonna need to upgrade a servo once again to something stronger, but hey, you know, that's the price you pay to have a good quality crawler. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, there we go. Uh, that's going to conclude this video. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. As always, questions and comments are always welcome, always welcome. Um, Will Anderson and Chad Nelson, very much appreciated once again, guys, for throwing out that suggestion of going back to that stock servo mount location and pan bar location. That way we could take full advantage of our suspension travel and articulation. Traxxas or Bauhaus, one of you guys. You need to make a mount to move that servo from behind the Panhard bar to in front of the Panhard bar. That way we can lower the servo down a little bit and get our steering geometry more correct without adding spacers to it. And life would be grand. <laughs> but until then, uh, this is probably the next best setup. So there we go, boys and girls. Once again, very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. Questions and comments are always welcome. And we will see you all on the next one. Thanks again.